Alex as I stub my toe. <sighs> hey there, how are you today? I'm gonna do something today that's not all that different from what I did a couple of days ago, except walk and talk money. What I did a couple of days ago was a little fancier. So basically doing the same thing that I did for the Sharknado red carpet, but I'm going to do it not in a red carpet version. I'm going to do a real. Oh, hey, this is my beachy casual summertime look. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, Want to prep the skin? I think prepping the skin means everything. So uh, this is this is like a rose water spray. I got this when I got all those wonderful products from Beauty by Design. Uh, really been pleased with this spray. I think of all of the products that I got from Beauty by Design, my two favorite things were the skin cleanser and this spray. So let's give the face a little mist. My hair has absolutely nothing done to it. I did nothing with it. I showered last night before I went to bed. It was dry before I went to bed. I let it dry naturally and then woke up this morning and ran my fingers through it. It hasn't even seen a hairbrush yet. So this is just stepped off the beach hair. And that's how you get it. You don't do anything. Uh, May Love, the Glow Maker. This stuff is amazing and terrific price point. I told you a little bit more, but I mean, they sell out of this stuff all the time. And I love it because it's so thin and light. But that and the regular facials I've been giving myself, I think these are why my skin is doing better than it ever has in my life. So if you're looking to help your skin along, uh, got a video coming up about some enzyme masks that I've been doing. You'll see, you see all of that. It's a company called Apotheky. Really love their masks. So look for that. Uh, the May Love Glow Maker, I'll drop a link for it down below. They're a terrific product. And for moisturizing, I'm using the um, Exuviance Citra Firm Face Oil which has vitamins F, A, C, and E. Face, see? They do say you should use a moisturizer afterwards, but I find that my skin just doesn't really need it. Just the oil seems to be enough. And yes, my face goes red as soon as I touch it. I know all the purists are going, no, always go up. You know, it's like when I paint a wall, I figure if I get the stuff on, that's good enough. I don't do things the right way. You've probably learned that about me. Uh, for the duration of this, I think I'm just gonna get my hair out of the way with a ponytail. It's really weird. I have my hair parted on the opposite side of what I usually do. I always part it on this side, and today it's parted on this side, and it's weird because it's like, it's a slightly darker gray on this side than on this side. When I have my hair flipped this way, you can see it's much whiter. Uh, it's a lot lighter here than it is here, but it's also thicker on this side than it is on this side. And I was just doing a commercial a few days ago for a hair thickening product and after staring in a mirror at myself for many, many hours on set and staring directly at the thinnest part of my hair, I felt the need to switch my part, oddly enough. And you know that air conditioner on, air conditioner off thing that we do? Yeah, we're going to do that. My two favorite sunscreens. Color Science has been a longtime favorite for many years, and I am beyond ecstatic that they now send me free things. So this one I got for free, and it really, really has become a favorite. Um, a, it's SPF 50. B, they don't 
say anywhere in their information that this is tinted. They do not claim that it is tinted, but I swear it makes my skin look better. So this I'm gonna be using on my face. On my chest, this is by Biore. It's, it's an SPF 50 as well. This is something that I get from Japan and I buy it on Amazon. I will drop the link down below. I've mentioned it before. It's not very expensive. In fact, I'll walk and talk while I do this. It's not very expensive. It's like nine bucks, about, about what you'd spend at the grocery store or the drug store for something, but it goes on really watery and sheer. And that has become a favorite for a body sunscreen. I also use it on my face sunscreen, but I really like this sort of makeup-like finish that I get from this Color Science Face Shield. A lot of times this summer I have just been wearing this instead of foundation. I'll throw a little concealer under my eyes and call it a day. Uh, then a little powder, of course, because it is rather dewy. Let me turn that air off. It's been eight days since I got that spray on tan. I think I told you I got a spray on tan for the first time a couple of months ago when I went on vacation. And I decided that it is nice to have for certain occasions, certain events. So I am considering it a worthwhile investment on those occasions. Uh, the mobile spray tanning that my friend works for, she works for a company called On The Glow. I don't know if they're available all over. I think they may just be California, Nevada. I don't think there are very many places yet. But uh, she comes to my home and sets up a pop-up tent and sprays me down and has me take a look in the mirror and ask how I like it and we make adjustments if she if I want it a little bit darker here or there and it takes about 15 20 minutes and she they charge sixty dollars and then with a tip so it's about 72 uh, but I really really like it as something uh, uh, something for a special occasion I have to go revisit one of those booths and see how it compares. Cause I did that years ago, but it was years ago and it was before I had silver hair. So I'd be interested to compare and see what I think. And I'll let you know that when I get around to it. I did pick up a foundation, especially for the times when I have spray tan and it might be a little bit dark because this spray tan is fading away. Uh, this is Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin in color Y255. So we'll find out, but I'm going to go with a pretty light hand with it. I want this to be pretty sheer. I don't want a heavy makeup. I just want to look like I just came in off the beach. I'm using my Sigma Soft Concealer Brush. Not really a foundation brush, but I like that it seems to be easy to control to really feather out the makeup and get it. I'm trying to basically stop my foundation around here so it doesn't get up into the hair, but that requires very lightly feathering it out. Yeah, still not bad. I don't know any professional that would tell you to dot it on like that. I'm not a professional. And it's okay to try this at home, kids. It is a bit yellower than my skin. I can see that now.
a smaller concealer brush with the same foundation right around my nose, just to give it a little heavier buildup. Somebody asked why I don't carry it down onto my neck. The sheer answer is laziness. Just lazy. I think a lot of makeup artists and a lot of cosmetic companies want you to use as much product as possible, so then you buy more product. I don't care if you buy any product or not. If you do all this same look and you do it with e.l.f. cosmetics, great. If you just put on sunscreen and a little bit of, you know, mascara, great. And you're just hanging out watching, great. I don't care if you use makeup or not. This is the Joe Blasco Orange Highlight 2, which might be a little heavy for daytime, but since it is what I used the other day, I'm going to use it again. not doing eye tape today because it's not a special occasion. I'm not going out and being photographed. RCMA No Color Powder. Oops. I think I'll just get that powder off my hand and my leg. <laughs> oh, you hate when that happens. Oof. Looks like somebody's vacuuming soon. Color Science Santa Fe Bronzer on a Kabuki brush. I always tap when I first put the bronzer on just to make sure that I don't get a big dark brown swoop across my face. So I just try to tap it because so many bronzers are just a bit darker than I can really fake. And I do eventually brush it, but I wait until I get most of it off from the tap. If you find you get any makeup in your hair and it shows, because it shows a lot on that white hair, doesn't it? Use a little bit of micellar water on a Q-tip or a cotton pad to remove it, and that'll take care of it. Makeup artist taught me that on set. I don't like to see a harsh contour line under the jaw, but I will take whatever's left on the brush and just sort of dust it under there, just so there's a slight shading. And a little bit on the bridge of the nose to make it look like I was just out in the sun. going to use that same Santa Fe bronzer as my eyeshadow using my it's all loved off but we assume it is the Sigma diffused crease brush
If you haven't picked up a package of disposable mascara wands, I don't know why not. They're super cheap, they're super handy. I use these for mascara, I use these for my eyebrows, I use these for cleaning things around the house, little tiny spaces to get into. They're really handy to have, so that's something I highly recommend. Looking forward to my microblading appointment. My microblading appointment is on the 30th, and from what I understand, the next day I will be terrified because it will seem way too dark. And then a few days later, I will go, where the heck did my eyebrows go? I just paid 500 bucks. And then I'll feel that way for a little while, and then eventually I will love them. So I'm anticipating that whole healing process that takes about three weeks to a month. Nervous, but excited. I think it's good that they only last for a couple of years. If I love them, I won't mind spending the money to have them retouched because it's not nearly as expensive every couple of years. Uh, if I hate them, I'll be really glad that they go away. I'm kind of looking at this. I divided the, the cost is $500 and it really varies. It costs $500 and then after about a month, when after the healing, they take a look at it and then they do touch up and that's a hundred bucks. So it's $600. And the way I look at it is I'm dividing the 600 bucks over two years. So that averages out to about 80 cents a day. So is it worth 80 cents a day for me to not have to draw my eyebrows in? And for me, because my vision isn't very good and because my eyebrows are very, very blonde, I decided it's worth it. So I will be taking you on that journey when I make it and uh, you'll know what, you know, you'll know very soon after I know. Scary side of the mirror. Anastasia Brow Wiz in Granite. Which is, you know what? Honestly, too dark for this look. It was fine for red carpet, but let me see if I can do something better. This is a Sephora eyebrow pencil, and I think it is a natural gray brown. What I like about this pencil is that it's very natural looking. What I dislike about this pencil is that it's so natural looking, I can barely see it when I'm putting it on. Will I pay 80 cents a day to not do that? You bet I will. Using my Back Talk palette, my favorite blushes in this have been this peachy tone, they call it low key, and this double take, this more rose tone. I like the uh, this peachy tone because it does have a bit of a highlight to it. Sephora Eye Pencil in Black Lace. Smudge Brush.
again, I'm almost just tapping that pencil along the lash line and making just little dots that I then sort of smudge together rather than going with a thick black stroke. And then my tight lining, you can go really deep under the eye when you tight line, or you can just touch a little bit along the lash line. And that's really all I'm trying to do. And that helps me keep from smudging too much down below. Using my Sigma smudge brush, I'm going to use my Too Faced palette. This is the chocolate gold. And I want, yeah, to not blind you, I'm gonna use that sort of like, ah, sorry, I'm blinding you. I'm gonna use this sort of coppery color, just a little smudge under the eyes. I just want a little bit of smart sparkle and a little bit of color under the eyes, not really a harsh line. I'm not going to an event today, so I'm not putting false eyelashes on. And I don't think I'm gonna go with liquid liner either. I wanna keep this a little softer. I am going to curl my lashes. Mascara is NYX, worth the hype. When I went to the Sharknado premiere, I was doing a beachy look, but I was with my boyfriend and I wanted to have a kiss-proof lipstick. The only kiss-proof lipstick that I had in the lip sense was a red color. And I think it was fine for the red carpet, but the red color really didn't go with the whole beachy vibe that I was looking for. So I ordered some more lip scents and it just came today. So we're trying it for the first time. This is Lip Sense in Praline Rose. And I'm going to attempt this without lip liner, but I may go in with lip liner at the end and touch it up around the edges because I know you're not supposed to, Lip Sense people. I know, I know, I know. But a pencil works better for me than the lip brush to line for me. That doesn't mean it's right. That just means it's what I do. And if brushes work for you great rock on I'm do it the right way please but I do it my way Oh, that's nice. That's a pretty color. That's just one layer. It's got two, two layers left to go. Very happy with that. I'll have to give it the proper test this weekend.
I have a glossy gloss to go on top of the lip sense. But since I was there shopping, I thought I'd try the matte gloss. That just, that sounds contradictory, doesn't it? A matte gloss, but it is a moisturizing gloss with a matte finish. because it feels much better with some moisturizer on it. And I want you to know, guys, that I do not think the Lip Sense is a great lipstick for moisturizing your lips. I don't generally wear it uh, if I'm just like hanging out with my girlfriends, but if I've got a date or I'm gonna be eating or I'm at an appearance where I'm gonna be photographed and I don't wanna take any chances, that's when I use the Lip Sense. Today it's just experimental. And yeah, I'm pleased with it. So back to beachy hair. Still weird with it parted on this side. A fun summertime look faking a little bit of a tan, a little bit of a sun-kissed look like we just got off the beach, and I love you bunches, and I will talk to you very soon.